Hello everyone, welcome back to the online tutorial on quantum chemistry. In the last video, we had gone through black body radiation. We saw the intensity versus frequency curves for the experimental black body radiation. We saw the curves for the temperatures T1, T2 and T3, where T3 is greater than T1, which is again greater than T1. We also saw the Rayleigh genes law which was derived based on the principles of classical mechanics. But Rayleigh Jeans law was not able to explain black body radiation completely. We saw that the expression diverges as nu square at a higher frequencies and this phenomenon was called ultraviolet catastrophe. So classical mechanics was not able to explain experimental black body curves. Was there any mistake in the derivation of Rayleigh Jeans law? In fact, not according to the principles of classical mechanics. In the derivation of the Rayleigh Jeans law, they assumed that the radiation is due to the vibrations of the electronic oscillators in the material body. So these electronic oscillators can take on a continuum of values for their energy. According to the classical mechanics, the observable variables can take on a continuum of values. So the electronic oscillators can take on a continuum of values for their energy. This is true according to the classical physics known at the 19th century. So there is no mistake in the Rayleigh Jeans law according to classical physics. The assumption by Rayleigh, genes, Rayleigh and genes were true according to the physics known at that time. But still it was not able to explain black body radiation. So there must be some mistake in the assumptions. The first person to realize this mistake was a German scientist Max Planck. He decided to break away from the assumption of the classical physics that the energy of the electronic oscillator can take on a continuum of values. Max Planck assumed that the energy of the electronic oscillator must be a minimum energy E or the energy of the electronic oscillators must be an integral multiple of this minimum energy E which is n e, where n is an integer. Max Planck assumed that this energy e is proportional to the frequency nu. Therefore, e is equal to h nu, where h is the proportionality constant. So the energy of the electronic oscillator will be like E, 2E, 3E, 4E, etc. And it cannot have some energy values like 0.5E or 1.3E or 2.7E, etc. When the black body is heated, the electronic oscillators will make transition from the lower energy states to the higher energy states. And when there is a transition from the higher energy states to the lower energy state, the radiation will be emitted. And this radiation is black body radiation. Let N0 be the number of oscillators with energy 0 and N1 the number of oscillators with energy E and N2 the number of oscillators with energy 2e and etc and nn are the number of oscillators with energy ne and so on. According to Boltzmann law, the number of oscillators with the energy ne that is nn is equal to n0 exponential minus n e divided by q 
KB T, where KB is the Boltzmann constant that we already saw during the during studying the Rayleigh Jeans law, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. Let me take exponential minus e divided by kvt as y for simplicity. So I can write nn is equal to n0 y raised to n. Now let's calculate the total number of oscillators. The total number of oscillators nt is equal to n0 plus n1 plus n2 plus etc plus nn plus etc. That is equal to sigma n is equal to 0 to infinity nn. But we know that nn is n0 y raised to n. So nt is equal to n0 sigma n is equal to 0 to infinity y raised to n. That is equal to n0 times 1 plus y plus y square plus etc. The value of this series is 1 by 1 minus y. So total number of oscillators nt is equal to n0 times 1 by 1 minus y. Now we have an expression for the total number of oscillators nt. Now let's calculate the total energy et. The total energy et is n0 times 0 plus n1 times e plus n2 times 2e plus etc plus nn times ne. So let me take e as a common factor. So et is equal to e times n1 plus 2n2 plus 3n3 plus etc plus n nn plus etc. That is equal to e times sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity n nn. We know that nn is n0 y raised to n. So et is equal to e n0 sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity n y raised to n. That is equal to e n0 times 1y plus 2y square plus 3y cube plus etc. Let me take y as a common factor from the series. So et is equal to e n0 y times 1 plus 2y plus 3y square plus etc. The value of this series is 1 by 1 minus y whole square. So et is equal to e n0 y times 1 by 1 minus y the whole square. Now we have an expression for the total energy ET. Now let's calculate the average energy E bar. Average energy E bar is total energy ET 
divided by the total number of oscillators nc that is equal to e n0 y divided by 1 minus y the whole square divided by n0 divided by 1 minus y let me cancel n0 and n0 and 1 minus y and 1 minus y so e bar is equal to e y divided by 1 minus y which is equal to e exponential minus e divided by kbt divided by 1 minus exponential minus e divided by kb t now let's calculate the density of radiative energy density of radiative energy rho nu t is equal to the number of oscillators in unit volume times the energy per oscillator that is the average energy e bar plan calculated that the number of oscillators in unit volume ni is equal to 8 pi nu square divided by c cube so rho nu t d nu is equal to 8 pi nu square divided by c cube times e exponential minus e by kbt divided by 1 minus exponential minus e divided by kbt b but e is equal to h nu so we can write 8 pi h nu cube divided by c cube times exponential minus h nu divided by kbt divided by 1 minus exponential minus h nu divided by kbt d nu let me divide both numerator and denominator by exponential minus h nu by kbt then the equation is the rho nu to d nu is equal to 8 pi h nu cube divided by c cube times 1 divided by exponential h nu divided by kbt minus 1 d nu here we have an expression for rho nu t d nu which is equal to h pi h, 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 8 pi h nu cube divided by c cube times 1 by exponential h nu by kbt minus 1 d nu and we had an expression for rho nu t d nu from Rayleigh Gilles law and this equation has the symbols which is similar to that in the Rayleigh Gilles law except h an adjustable constant h Max Planck tried to fit this equation with the experimental black body curves and he found that this expression will fit with the experimental black body curves if the value of h is equal to 6.62 times 10 raised to minus 34 joule second and this constant 
is called Planck's constant. And it is a very famous and a fundamental constant in physics. So Max Planck was able to explain the black body radiation by introducing a new expression for the energy density which is 8 pi h d cube divided by c cube times 1 by exponential h nu by kpt minus 1 d nu and this is called Planck's distribution law for black body radiation. Now we have come across two expressions to explain black body radiation. First one is the Rayleigh Jeans law which was based on classical mechanics and it assumed that the energy of the electronic oscillators can take on a continuum of values. But Rayleigh Jeans law failed to explain black body radiation. The second one is the Planck's distribution law which deviated from the classical mechanics and assumed that the energy of the electronic oscillators cannot be continuous but discrete. Planck assumed that the energy of the electronic oscillators must be a minimum energy E or an integral multiple of this minimum energy E which is equal to Ne. And this energy E which is equal to H nu is called a quantum. So Max Planck introduced a quantum hypothesis in order to explain black body radiation. And it was a revolution in the history of physics. Initially, the scientists were reluctant to accept this idea. But soon, Albert Einstein realized the importance of Planck's quantum hypothesis. And he used a similar quantum hypothesis to explain photoelectric effect. That we will learn in the next class.